हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन। टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द मल्टी मोड ग्रेडेड इंडेक्स फाइबर आई होप यू ऑल हैव सीन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वेर आई टॉक अबाउट द मल्टी मोड स्टेप इंडेक्स फाइबर देर आई टोल्ड यू दैट द मल्टी मोड ग्रेडेड इंडेक्स फाइबर इज गिविंग मी द बेटर परफॉर्मेंस एंड आई गेव यू अ क्लू ऑल्सो दैट वाई द मल्टी मोड ग्रेडेड इंडेक्स फाइबर इज गिविंग मी द बेटर परफॉर्मेंस इन द टर्म्स ऑफ डिस्पर्जन देन द मल्टी मोड स्टेप इंडेक्स फाइबर सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू एनालाइज द मल्टी मोड ग्रेडेड इंडेक्स फाइबर इन डिटेल सो इफ यू हैव स्टिल नॉट वॉच द प्रीवियस वीडियो इट इज हाईली रिकमेंडेड दैट यू गो बैक वॉच इट फर्स्ट एंड देन कम टू दिस वीडियो so let's start our discussion so graded index fiber is giving me lesser intermodal dispersion why because we are having the different refractive index at the different parts of the core inside the optical fiber inside the graded index fiber so because it is having the lesser intermodal dispersion it is giving me lesser losses and it is going to give me the substantial bandwidth improvement so now here you can see this is my optical fiber and this is the path of the meridional ray inside the optical fiber core so now here this is the parabolic refractive index profile i have considered alpha is equal to 2 so this is the reason i am calling it as parabolic refractive index profile so core is this which is having the refractive index n1 this is my cladding which is having the refractive index n2 so these are the different path of the meridional ray inside the optical fiber so let's consider this to be my meridional ray 1 this to be my meridional ray 2 and this to be my meridional ray 3 so we all can see the meridional ray 1 this is 2 now this is one this is meridional ray 2 this is 3 so you can see here the path traveled by the meridional ray 1 is the longest the path traveled by meridional ray 2 is the intermediate in between the 1 and 3 and the path traveled by the meridional ray 3 is the least so you can see this is my axial ray which is traveling the straight path and it is represented by 4 and in the terms of path traveled you can see the order you can see the one is traveling the longest path two then then three then four right so now we are having the difference in velocities also for all of them we all know the refractive index profile when i am considering the parabolic profile because the parabolic profile is the optimum profile again why it is optimal profile that uh, that is also a very big question and we are going to talk about the optimal profile in this video itself so this video is going to cover why i am working with the parabolic profile or alpha is equal to 2 only in the most of the scenarios so now when i consider alpha is equal to 2 right so as of now i have considered that the optimal profile is alpha is equal to 2 or the parabolic profile so for that the refractive index profile can be given as n11 minus 2 delta r upon a square under root so this is having the power 1 by 2 when r is equal to less than a so this is the condition when i am inside the core so inside the core my refractive index is increasing as i am moving from cladding towards the core right so now here i would be having n11 minus 2 delta 1 upon 2 so you can reduce it you can put the value of delta which is the relative refractive index and this is the condition for r is greater than equal to a so in this condition r is greater than equal to a the refractive index would be n2 so here inside the cladding the refractive index is constant so this is my cladding so you can see over here this is the parabolic profile that i have with the help of this equation i can make this graph right so here i will be having the maximum refractive index uh, here i will be having the minimum refractive index okay so now the meridional ray is going to follow the sinusoidal trajectory so one 
2 and 3 are the meridional ray which are following the sinusoidal trajectories and these are all of the different length right so one is having greater length than 2 then 3 so this is how I can classify the length of the trajectories of meridional ray now I know the group velocity is inversely proportional to the local refractive index. I hope all of you have seen the previous video where I talked about the group velocity and the phase velocity. So it is inversely proportional to the refractive index. Now here you can see here at this point where the ray 1 is traveling I would be having the least refractive index. So now when the I will be having the least refractive index Vg would be high. So you can see at the one ray I would be having the higher velocity. Now when I consider 2 I would be having the intermediate refractive index and Vg would be lesser than the Vg for 1. If I consider 3 I would be having a higher refractive index. So when the refractive index is higher so you can see here at this point I would be having the higher refractive index. You can see 3 is at this point, two, oh, 1 is at this point, right? So you can see at this point I would be having a higher refractive index. So when the refractive index is high, Vg is going to reduce. So I can say 3 is propagating with a lesser velocity. So when both of them are propagating, 1 is propagating at a higher velocity, 3 is propagating with a lower velocity in a lower path. 1 is traveling a longer path but with a higher velocity. So both of them are going to reach at the same time. So dispersion losses will be minimized in this case. So I can say larger sinusoidal paths are traveling with the higher speed and this is how I am getting equalization of the transmission time. Now axial ray is present in the high refractive index medium. It is present in the highest refractive index medium. I would be having the highest refractive index at the center of the core which is the axis of the core and there I have the axial ray and it is present in the high refractive index medium so it will be having the slowest speed. So now graded profile is going to reduce the disparity in the more transit time and this is how it is going to reduce the delay difference. So what is the difference between the delay difference in the single mode fiber and the graded index fiber. So you can see the delay difference between the slowest and the fastest mode in the graded index fiber is again represented by delta T G in this case. So here it would be equal to ln1 delta square upon 2c. So here you can see it is represented with the delta square. So it is square proportional to the relative refractive index that is delta or it can be represented as Na raised to power 4 8 Ni cube into C. So now absolute temporal width is given as delta Tg which is equal to ln1 delta square upon 8c. So you can see here we have a factor 8 in in spite of this factor 2. So it is going to further reduce the delta Tg that is the delay difference when there is no delay difference between the T max and T min so which means I am reducing the dispersion effect. So sigma G is reduced as compared to sigma S. How the sigma G is reduced? Sigma G can be given as delta upon D sigma S where D depends upon the various parameters. So I have not shown you the derivation for this delay difference. Right, so you can see these delay differences derivations but for your exam point of view you can skip them and this is the reason I just put the formula you have to know the concept really well for the graded index fiber. So now here when I find out the derivation and when I find out the delay difference with the help of derivation. So you can see here I consider a lot of factors right. I consider what kind of core I have, what kind of cladding I have, what kind of relative refractive index. I have right. So when I consider a lot of things I would be having this parameter D which is a constant in between 4 to 10. It depends upon the various constants and the parameters I have considered inside the derivation. So now sigma G can be represented as ln1 delta square upon 20 under root 3c. So this is the RMS dispersion factor right. So pulse broadening factor which is the RMS factor which is sigma G for pulse broadening for the graded index fiber which is 
रिप्रेजेंटेड एज एल एन वन डेल्टा स्क्वायर अपॉन ट्वेंटी अंडर रूट थ्री सी सो नाउ कमिंग टू द क्वेश्चन द बिग क्वेश्चन दैट वाई आई हैव द ऑप्टिमल प्रोफाइल एट एल्फा इज इक्वल टू सो यू कैन सी वी हैव द डिफरेंट एल्फाज ओवर हेयर नाउ वेन आई प्लॉटेड इंटर मॉडल पल्स ब्रॉडनिंग सो इंटर मॉडल पल्स ब्रॉडनिंग मीन्स आई हैव द डिस्पर्जन ऑफ द लॉसेज सो वेन आई प्लॉटेड द लॉसेज यू कैन सी आई हैम गेटिंग द ऑप्टीमल कंडीशन एट एल्फा इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट नाइन एट so here at the 1.98 i will be getting the optimal condition if i just shift away from the 1.98 i am going to get a very reduced condition so instead of 2 i can precisely say i have to work upon alpha is equal to 1.98 so when i am considering relative refractive index to be equal to 1% the optimum alpha is 1.98 that i have already told you so here at this condition i will be getting minimum dispersion now the improvement factor for the graded index fiber in relation to the rms pulse broadening is 1000 but when i consider all of the practical conditions so improvement factor for the practical graded index fiber over the step index fiber practically it is not 1000 it is 100 so graded index fiber i can say it is 100 times practically more improved than the multi mode step index fiber so i hope you understood this and i hope you understood the various concepts of the multi mode graded index fiber and how it is improved than the step index fiber so now coming to the modal noise what is the modal noise as the name suggests is some time of noise right so this noise is related to the speckle patterns we have some speckle patterns which are observed when these speckle patterns are observed when the multi mode fibers are having fluctuations so the fluctuations are the noises so the fluctuations have characteristic time which is longer than the resolution time of detector so resolution time is the minimum time over which it can see various different values so when the detector is able to see the characteristic time for the different fluctuations as well fluctuations are noise and when the detector is able to detect the fluctuations so it is going to give me the speckle patterns at the detector which is the modal noise so how it is generated it is generated by the interference of the modes from different sources so now when i have different coherent sources right so i hope you all know what are the coherent sources when i have the coherent sources we have the interference of the modes from these coherent sources and this is how we have generated the modal noise or the speckle noise so because speckle noise are generated due to the modes from the coherent Uh, sources this is why it is called the modal noise now coherent time of the source as i told you it is greater than the intermodal dispersion time that is the delta t so coherent time can be represented as 1 upon frequency which is 1 upon delta f which is equal to delta f is greater than 1 upon delta t we all know dispersion time is delta t so delta f should be greater than 1 upon delta t so this is the condition to generate the modal noise so what are the causes causes are the various disturbances so what are all disturbances are there which are going to generate the fluctuations for the modal noise first of all vibrations are present now the discontinuities in between the core cladding and then we have connectors splices source detector coupling so all of these things are generating the modal or the speckle noise so i hope you understood this so how i can avoid this model and the speckle noise i can increase the numerical aperture right i can reduce the discontinuities along the core cladding interface i can increase the spectrum i can reduce the number of modes or i can easily work on the single mode fiber right so i can reduce delta and i can reduce the numerical aperture so these are the various things by which i can reduce or improve the performance of the detectors how by reducing the speckle noise so overall dispersion would be sigma t so this is the sigma t is the total pulse broadening total pulse broadening is given as sigma c square plus sigma n square under root so sigma c is the chromatic pulse broadening which is due to the waveguide dispersion 
as well as chromatic dispersion so now i hope you understand sigma n is the modal dispersion that we have sigma c is the intramodal dispersion sigma n is the intermodal dispersion so this is how i can find out the overall dispersion i hope you understood each and everything that i have discussed in this video if you have still any kind of doubt you can put the doubt in the comment and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible i hope you will be soon meeting me in the next session and i hope you are going to give me a thumbs up and you are going to give me a good comment as your feedback and i hope you will be sharing it with your friends as well thank you so much